Welcome back to another Thursday episode from our boys at the Buffalo Happy Hour. Today we have another educational episode for you, kind of in line with the series that we started last week, which is how to start a podcast. That's probably one of our most asked questions of people in our sphere of influence of like, bro, how did you even do this? Yeah, and we tell them a lot of therapy, <laughs> a lot of uh, thought-provoking questions, and research. Mm-hmm. So... That kind of led us into this series because now we feel like we are able to share some of those nuggets to those starting out because it's been over two years and most podcasts fail within the first six months. So we've been around for a little bit, which is weird to think about, but here we are. So we're going to kind of provide you guys with some wonderful information regarding audio, which is the heart and soul of your podcast. So like we said earlier, starting with the umbrella working our way down into very specific fine details. And now comes one of the main structural components to the set umbrella of a podcast, which is audio. Correct. But first, we have to get to today's sponsor, which is Addie's. Addie's Fine Wine and Spirits, located on Transit Road in Billville. We appreciate your continued partnership because without you guys, we would be very thirsty without anything to drink so we thank you for that they do have an app just download that on the apple app store or the google playground play app store (laughs) whatever it's called and you are then able to check their inventory order things and ship it to you if you are within new york state and they have other things other than spirits specifically bourbon rye and irish whiskey and scotch they also have tequilas they have vodkas and they have wine and vodka seltzers so if you're in the market for any of those check their inventory again on their app addies and outside of that they have great events including professional tasting events held by their in-house wine sommelier and if you are local swing on by because they are open with tremendous hours Uh, they are tremendous people and they work tremendously hard so, Addies, we appreciate your continued partnership slash sponsorship in this entire endeavor, and we will see you shortly because we essentially work part-time there. Correct. We actually probably should. We should start clocking in hours. I've made the joke before to Lewis, <laughs> and for those that don't know, he's a the owner. And he uh, kind of laughed, but then like went dead straight faced and looked at me and said whenever you want <laughs> and i was like okay now i'm terrified so i'm gonna take that back it's awesome but yes all right so if you didn't catch last week's episode we did the whole umbrella like how to start a podcast overall like what you should be thinking about what you should be planning how you should do this like cadence wise all that is last week's episode i'll link it up here for you that is going to give you a structure for the rest of this mini series that we're doing Today's very important, though, because if you're starting a podcast, whether it's video or audio, there has to be an audio component or else it's not a podcast. True that. So when you start an audio podcast, obviously audio is 100% of it. If you don't have good audio equipment, you're dead in the water. No one's going to listen to a raspy iPhone connected to your earpiece podcast for an hour because their ears will be bleeding and they'll want to kill themselves. Just kidding. We don't condone that. But... If, They'll think about it. Yeah, absolutely. I've already thought about it twice recording this episode. Um, but if you're doing a video podcast, audio is still half of your video. You can have great audio or camera equipment, but if you don't have good audio equipment, no one's going to listen. A lot of our views come from, or our listens come from Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Which means that there's people incorporating us into their daily routines. Mm-hmm. This is something else that you should probably keep in mind. Someone's not going to sit down for an hour in their house and lay on the couch with their phone on their chest and just listen to a Spotify episode of a podcast. It's very, very rare that that occurs. Most people are going to be driving to and from work, listening to a podcast opposed to a a radio, the same playlist that's been on their Spotify playlist for the last six years, um, or the same songs from the 90s and or 80s or 60s or 70s, depending on what age you are. So in that, 
you don't want ridiculous background noise coming through. You want it to sound good coming through your car speakers, and you want it to come through as, like... Clean and crisp as possible. For your listeners. Yeah. So keep that in mind and do your research. There's budget-friendly options that are, yes, going to get the job done. Yeah. However, is that conducive for what you're trying to do, especially when initially you're trying to establish legitimacy with your podcast. Yeah. And the best, before we get into the specifics here about the different types of microphones and how you can really start to narrow down your research, we invested in these microphones going off from the top. The first episode, we're like, let's get these. And we haven't changed since. And we like to believe that our audio quality is relatively good. I mean, there are no sure SM7Bs, like the Joe Rogan podcast God himself, but they're pretty good audio quality. So Without if you invest enough. once, you don't have to do it again for a while. Yeah. So when you're looking at microphones, you have two different options here. You have XLR microphones, which are these things, and you have USB microphones. XLR microphones require some sort of audio interface or a mixer for the microphones to plug themselves into rather than going directly into the computer. And that's one of the benefits of a USB microphone is that you can plug it directly into your computer. It's really easy to use a USB microphone. Obviously, you plug it into the computer, you start talking and do it, and then that's your quality. The challenge with that is there's very limited high-end and high-quality options when it comes to a USB microphone. So if you're going to go that route, just be very cognizant of that and invest in a good USB microphone that's going to last you. Another thing is it gets very challenging if you have more than one guest. So if you're going to have multiple people talking, there's only so many USB ports on your computer that you can utilize. So keep that in mind, too, when you're deciding on which microphone to go to. From an XLR standpoint, there's a ton of options out there for you. Uh, it could give each guest its own audio file. So when you start recording, you can record track one, track two, like we do here for these episodes, that can allow you to tinker and tweak each person's individual audio file, which will then just, again, in turn, help your listeners be able to hear what you're saying. And finally, um, examples of the XLR cable uh, microphones we have right here is an Audio-Technica AT2020. You also have a Shure SM7B, which is what a lot of podcasts use, but that's really expensive. This is around 100 bucks per microphone, and the Shure SM7B is like 400 per microphone. Yep. From, an X, from a USB standpoint, most people go just a Blue Yeti, and I don't know, I think that's like 60 bucks or 70 bucks or something like that. So how do microphones work? Now, this is going to be really important when you start understanding what you want your voice to sound like. Microphones convert sound waves into voltages, which is then sent to a preamp. There's two different types of microphones out there, types of microphones, not XLR cables. There's two different types of microphones called condenser or dynamic microphones. Condenser use various uh, or variable capis uh, ca capacitance. Capacitance? It's, I mean, we're too far into the weeds it, for me. Which means they use the actual sound waves to vibrate a diaphragm inside the microphone with a magnet plate. This process creates a boost of voltage, which then, in turn, is sent to the phantom power to increase it and then sent to the output of the microphone, which is what we use right now. Uh, you can see our current audio mixer has phantom power on, and if it's not pressed down, you can't hear us at all. So it's very important with condenser microphones. Um, typically, these are more sensitive to noise, which are better for natural tone and generally used for voice, bass, drum, ambient noise, uh, so on. So it's more of a natural talking microphone as opposed to the dynamic microphone, which is, uses electromagnetism, which means turning sound waves into voltages using a magnet. Typically, they're low sensitivity and higher gain thresholds, and these are more for loud vocals or, like, screaming. If you and I start screaming right now, we're going to top off, and it's going to sound distorted. With a dynamic microphone, you can basically scream as loud as you want, and it won't sound distorted. It just might blow your eardrums. <laughs> so Good to know. Yeah. Uh, but dynamic micro microphones are more durable, and they're typically cheaper. So keep that in mind, too, when you're looking at them. From our standpoint, we recommend going the condenser microphone route because it gives you the most natural-sounding voice as if you were sitting right here in front of us talking to us. So when you start looking at that, this is going to be a very quick segment, and this is called polar patterns. And polar patterns means how the microphone is collecting the sound. Omnidirectional means that it's recording the entire outside of the microphone so everything behind us the heater here if it was if we were using omni omnidirectional microphones you would be able to hear the heater very very high but we use cardioid microphones which means you can't hear what's really behind the microphone or even if i go over here you can't hear that 
that's what a cardio microphone does is it really emphasizes the front of the microphone. That way, when you're talking with your guests and there's something going on in the background, it's not super distracting, which is huge in our podcast because if there's sound around us, we're screwed. Correct. And we took into account first budget, second durability, and third functionality. And we knew that we were going to do interviews. We knew we were going to travel to different establishments because we focus on small businesses, of course. And in that, we are traveling to their place of business, so their brick and mortar. And in that, we had to make sure that our microphones were able to withstand that journey. We're in the Northeast. Obviously, we're in Buffalo. So we wanted to make sure that we were getting the best bang for our buck because this was self-funded. You can obviously hear stuff. So, like, you guys are probably in the comments, oh, dude, we can hear the heater. It's like, yeah, it's not meant to be perfect. Right. Like, you can still hear that. But it, the whole point of it is it's drowned out so our voices are more prevalent. So when you look at XLR microphones, you are going to want either an audio interface or a mixer. We started off on a Focus Scarlett 2i2. Yep, the focus right. That yeah. was a riot. It was an audio interface. So basically what that does is it takes the microphone, puts it into an interface that then connects to your computer where all your sound is being recorded. That's the interface part of it. Then we upgraded to a mixer because we were sick of carrying around my five-year-old laptop with us. So now we use a mixer which records everything onto an SD card. Neither way is wrong. It's just your convenience standpoint. We like to have a lighter load on us when we're traveling around to these different businesses. So that's why we went the mixer route. It helps just recording onto an SD card and we don't have to bring the computer. Um, and also, I think it sounds better because then we can tweak individual tracks and mm -hmm. we can use more than uh, two people. When we first started out with our Scarlet, it only recorded two tracks. Yeah. And now we can record eight. So... Those are the two things that you also have to consider. If you go with a USB microphone like the Blue Yeti, you don't have to worry about an audio interface, which then brings down the cost of your overall system, understood, because it plugs directly in your computer. So other equipment that you'll need with your microphone is obviously you'll need some stands. These are called boom arms. If you watch our interviews, we have a stable stand that's uh, on the basically the tabletop for the guests to talk into, you need to buy those because you can't just hold it. I mean, I guess you could, but it would be awkward. Yep. Uh, you would also need shock mounts, which are these little things right here, which basically, if I hit the stand, you can't really hear a ton of the reverberation because of the microphone being suspended, and it's not absorbing a lot of the vibrations from movements or hitting the table and stuff like that. That's why we're able to do this, and everything is still a honky-dory. Yeah. The other thing that you'll need are pop filters, which are these little guys right here. Yep. If you don't have pop filters, you're going to have a lot of those plosives with those P's and the B's that are really going to punch your microphone. Sometimes you can hear us doing it a lot, uh, depending on how close we are, if we don't want the heater to come through. But uh, most of the time, it's going to be less harsh if you don't have those pop filters on because it's absorbing some of those plosives and the air going right to the microphone. And we have pop filters every single time mm -hmm. we record, whether it's a Wednesday Whisker review, a cocktail video, um, a interview, a weekly episode, doesn't matter. If we are doing something podcast related that involves the microphones, which is always, then we have a pop filter. Yeah. Last thing when it comes to audio is headphones. You want to talk about headphones a little bit? Headphones are awesome just because what they do is they allow you to understand what you sound like when you speak, but then also when somebody else cuts in, it subconsciously makes you stop talking, which helps your listeners because then it prevents you from over talking on your show. So that means the listener is only going to hear one voice at a time. The brain works in insane ways. We're still learning about it every single day, obviously. I'm not qualified to speak about the brain. What I do know is that if I have headphones on and I talk and he starts to talk, whether it's a sentence or whatever, it's very difficult for you because you're hearing his voice directly in your ears this close to continue your thought and continue speaking because you just want to listen and mm -hmm. that's human instinct. So there's a lot to that. It also helps in regards to your guests so that they know that this sounds better than this and it sounds better than this and etc. So when they start getting all excited and they point and they're doing all these crazy things throughout the interview, with a headphone, they're understanding, hey, no one heard what I just said. <laughs> so I have to reiterate my point, which helps you on the back end too, not only from an editing standpoint, but just from a viewer's and listener's experience on your show of, hey, they do a good job and they got everything covered. They're not that expensive. Uh, granted, you need a, a good mixer that can plug in and ensure that everything is capable of the added equipment, but 
it's a huge benefit to your show and you can still wear hats you can still wear beanies if your hair is great if there's a female on the show who's very cognizant about her image because she's of course in front of a camera as well on top of it specifically with us all they have to do is the same thing that some even our male guests do when their hair is all set they drop the the uh, support band behind their head so they do one of these and then they still get the same experience except now their hair is protected and they're not worried about that so Headphones are awesome. They're durable. Uh, we bring them everywhere, and they do a great job. Mm-hmm. So that's really all of the audio aspects that we wanted to touch on during today's episode. At the end of this mini series, we'll take you through our editing process, which kind of goes through the post processing aspects of audio, making sure that my volume is the same as Mike's volume, even though we're not tinkering with everything. We're a two man operation, so it's tough for us to continuously monitor to make sure that we're on the same level yep. but that's what editing's for so at the end of the op, uh this whole series we'll take you on our editing journey and it'll be a hoot because it is a lot of work but it's fun yeah and there's software to help you in that entire process mm-hmm. which he will touch on so yeah all set so if you're going to be looking at creating a podcast definitely make sure you rewind check out some of this information again we went over a lot of detail around specific microphones if you have suggestions on microphones let us know in the comments below but one option that i can say and i highly recommend this is what we did find two options that you're interested in then go on youtube and be like the audio technica at2020 versus the sure sm7b someone done the comparison for you you just have to listen to see which one you want more or if it's justifiable to spend 200 more dollars on a sure so keep that in mind do your research do all that um and yeah let let us know if you have any questions on any equipment if you are going to start a video podcast stay tuned for next week when we go over our video equipment what we started off with some of the mistakes that we made because we made more mistakes on the camera side when we started out more than the audio side, so that's going to probably be a fun episode. Uh, so if you're going to be watching or you're going to be doing a video podcast, make sure you tune in next week for all that information. And if you know anybody else in your realm that is going to start a podcast, feel free to share this with them. Uh, let them know that we did all the research for them, and if they have any questions, they can also ask us as well. There it is, everybody. We will see you next week for another fun-filled, exciting episode. Please remember to always drink responsibly, be a good person, and Michael. Do not litter. Oh, we're out. I'm not afraid of